Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. I am coming to you live in the Mompreneur Tribe. Um, for those of you I don't know, my name is Anjali Varma and I am the host of the Mompreneur Tribe. Um, if you're catching this there, then hello. If not, uh, you can find that by searching Mompreneur Tribe in Facebook. Um, and I'm also a business coach uh, who works with uh, clients on everything from putting your packaging together, your branding, social media, marketing, um, you know, strategy, anything to get your business up and running or take it to the next level. So if you have a need for a business coach, would love for you to send me a DM or send me an email. Um, you can find info uh, about me at AnjaliVarma.com. And uh, one other housekeeping thing, I am rolling out a new group of masterminds, hopefully next month. So if you're interested in powwowing with fellow uh, female entrepreneurs uh, in a safe environment where you can brainstorm and um, bounce ideas off of one another, uh, definitely look up more info on my mastermind groups. Um, so I am going to now introduce you to my guest of the week. Oh, and before I do that, next week, I'm trying to get a little more strategic um, in the planning of my Facebook Lives. So I um, wanted to let you know that for next week, I do have someone coming on to talk about time management tips. Um, so helping to reduce the overwhelm and figure out more ways that you become productive in the time that you have. Uh, so I'll probably get a little more specific in my newsletter uh, coming up on exactly what we'll be talking about or in Facebook, but definitely uh, hold next Tuesday, 2.30 Eastern time for a special guest on time management. Um, okay, and with that, look at that, I just zoomed you right in. Um, so with that, I am going to now introduce my guest and if somebody out there in the tribe can maybe chat and tell me you're there um, I always like to just see the hello so I know that we are good and no technical difficulties um, but in the meantime I'm going to introduce Rosanna this is Rosanna Volmerhausen of DC Style Factory hello Rosanna hi Anjali hi everyone I am so excited to have Rosanna with us uh, for a couple reasons. One, her and I, I mean, we pretty, I mean, we know people in common from the female entrepreneur scene, but um, I feel like we really became buddies on Instagram um, <laughs> by following each other and chatting with one another. Um, and you know, you guys know, I love telling these success stories all the time. Hi, Colleen, thank you so much. Um, I tell these success stories all the time, but Rosanna and I literally, we formed a little friendship over Instagram by following each other, commenting on each other's Insta stories. Um, and then one of us DM the other to me and we met for lunch two weeks ago and it was like this amazing, what was that? Indian food got me. Oh, was, yeah. We met at my in-law's restaurant. Um, shout out to Bombay Thindor, if you guys live in Virginia. Um, and we had this great, um, you know, powwow. And, like, it was like an hour and a half. We were brainstorming. And that's kind of how we thought of this because Rosanna does an amazing job of Insta stories. So today we're going to tackle um, this platform, which I feel like is um, – I think it's the top marketing trend for 2018. And I feel like those that are in it are really, really in it. But those that are not kind of think of it as just another social media channel. But Rosanna is going to share with us today um, how she's really been able to use this channel to, um, you know, to drive sales for her business. So Rosanna, before we jump in, um, tell everyone just about DC Style Factory so they know kind of what it is that you do. Sure. I am Rosanna Vollmerhausen, and I'm the owner and chief stylist of DC Style Factory, and we are a personal styling company here in the DC area. I, When I started this business almost 10 years ago, I was a one-woman show, and now we've grown to a team of three stylists, and then we have three support staff. Um, we are working full-time with our clients. We serve men and women all around the DC area, and our goal always is to really work with our clients style needs that are their personal individual needs. Yes. And tell everybody your Insta handle so that they can get a feel for where you are afterwards. Great. Um, it's at DC style factory on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, um, Twitter, all those different channels. Okay, perfect. Uh, and I am at Ange Varma, A N J Varma, um, on Instagram, so that you can maybe get a feel for some of the ways that Rosanna and I leverage 
um, what is definitely my favorite channel. And I don't know if you agree, if you feel the same way, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So Rosanna, why don't you, why don't we just jump right in and guys feel free to um, comment real time um, with any questions and we'll pause to take your comments and or questions. Uh, and if you're watching the replay, um, hello, Nicole and Caitlin. Uh, if you're watching the replay, you can still comment because Rosanna and I will be going back and checking throughout the week um, to answer any questions you have, even if you're not real time, because I know a lot of you watch this after the fact. So Rosanna, why don't you share with us? Because what this is what I think is so great. Um, Rosanna was talking to me beforehand about how there really is a strategy and a method to the madness. Um, so can you maybe give us a little idea of what that more strategic, it's not just posting whenever you feel like it, um, you know, how do you approach Insta stories? Sure. So first, um, I just want to quickly address the whole Insta stories, Snapchat thing, because I think that is what gives a lot of people pause yeah. when it comes to Insta stories is because they relate it so much to what Snapchat is, you know, but I really view it so differently. And because I use it for business, I definitely have a plan and a strategy and things I've tested out on it that have worked and some things that haven't worked. So I'm just going to quickly share some of my what has worked for my business and my approach. So first of all, I take the name of the channel, literally Insta stories. So for a viewer to want to keep watching my Insta stories or actually anybody's Insta stories, you have to want to know what's coming next. Um, whenever, you know, I have, I'm following someone on Instagram and I'm checking out their Insta stories. If they're posting things that don't seem related um, it's, it's easy to lose interest. So I really do try to create a story each day and people are always surprised, um, when I tell them that I post 15 to 20 Insta stories per day. And really what I'm doing is telling a little story, a little story about my life, my business and what I do on the day to day. And it's really establishing that connection with um, the people who are watching and who are potential clients, potential customers. Um, so so you post fifteen to twenty times a day, and but you're you are very you're very strategic on it being a story, right? So how many posts per story would you say, or does okay. it really depend? Let me let me clarify a little bit. When I say fifteen to twenty, those are actually fifteen to twenty of those snippets. Yeah, those little, you know, so those together create what I call like a cohesive story. And that's what I'm trying to create each day. So each day is its own story, but within that are those little snippets of stories. So what I'm saying is when people post those little snippets that seem a little disjointed or not connected, that's where they can lose viewers, um, where okay. people lose interest. So if you can really connect the dots for people, that I think is going to maintain their interest. Um, so for example, my story is I'm a personal stylist, I'm a business owner, I'm a mom and a wife. You know, so my story is always this sort of loop of that, you know, business, personal stylist, and, and it's in that order, personal stylist, business owner, and then mom and wife, you know, so my percentage breakdown is always 70% of the business work, and then 30% of that personal stuff that really, um, I think is still very important to have that human connection. I mean, that's really what people want is to feel connected. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Rosanna, we have a question of clarification. I think I confuse people. Um, so the 15 to 20 snippets, like, so can you give us an example maybe? So is it you know, the 15 to 20 instances that are creating one arc of a story or are you having several stories a day? So give us an example with like one of your one of your days and how let it me, works. Let me back up just a little bit in case I know a lot of people maybe haven't used Insta stories before and they only are around for 24 hours. They, um, they disappear after 24 hours. So I use that 24 hours to, that, that's what I'm saying is that big story you know, that I'm creating. And within that are those little 30 second snippets, you know, that you see yes. that you can scroll through. So there's about 15 to 20 of those little snippets to create that 24 hour 
story. Right. Okay. But your story could be multiple clients or multiple things that you're doing. It's not like it's 15, 20 about the same thing. Right. So you're basically saying showing your day in about 15 to 20 little snippets. Right. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So yes, it's not about the same client or the same shopping excursion, or there might be like maybe two. I usually try not to do more than two to three of those 30 second snippets per activity. Yeah. Creating that arc that you're yes. describing. Okay, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, Renee. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, but I think I think that that does. Uh, so one of the things you mentioned when we were prepping was the idea that uh, you actually kind of save it for later. So you can you talk a little bit about that? And I think again, this goes to the idea of as opposed to just being in the moment and doing something really quick, you're very strategic and well thought out about how you're leveraging this channel. Yes. So a lot of people think that, and and that's the beauty of Insta stories is that it, it does feel very in the moment, but I usually will, I'm busy during the day. I'm jumping from client to client. I'm in meetings all day. I'm on phone calls. I'm shopping online in person all over the place. I, you actually have to stop and write captions. Nobody, I mean, I'm sure you, your viewers out there don't have time to do that either. So what I do is take pictures on my camera roll. So I just create like a little library for the day of things that I, you know, just every time I have a new activity, I just snap a picture of something related to that activi- activity or do a little video or something. And I don't post it right away. But in between my meetings or my clients, I'll usually have a little bit of time And that's when I'll post, you know, so I can kind of go through and review my pictures, my videos and decide really what's worth posting and what's going to be most interesting to people, too. Sometimes, you know, you're snapping pictures and maybe it's blurry or something didn't come out quite right. Yeah, that gets deleted. But but it helps me edit the story and really be strategic about exactly what I want to present. And I also think for those that are um, wary of using this and or other social media channels because it's such a time suck, which I know it can be, uh, this is a way to kind of put everything together and be more efficient in your time as opposed to always being on Insta stories and doing things. So I think it's a great tip to kind of clump it all together and again, be more strategic in the way you're approaching. Just to let everybody know, I do spend about half an hour every day um, putting those pictures together, you know, it might be 15 minutes in my car in between clients and then another 15 or so minutes at the end of the day, you know, so I kind of do it in chunks depending on what my day looks like. If I'm having an office day, maybe I can just post more in the moment because I'm not, you know, interfacing with a client or in a meeting, but, um, but that's how I tackle it and it does save time. Yeah. And uh, one little tip for people that are kind of new to Insta Stories is you can always go in and take like I'll boomerang from Insta Stories or I'll do a video from Insta Stories so that it's timed exactly right. And then you can click save and it'll save to your camera roll and then you can X out of it and use it for later. So just another tip like on how to use it, but then kind of save it for um, stockpiling, basically. (laughs) Absolutely. I I firmly believe in creating that little library for yourself. And maybe if something didn't fit on Insta stories, it might fit for something else you're doing in terms of marketing on other social media channels. So honestly, you're, uh, it's, I think it's good to look at it as it's not just for Insta stories, but I'm just taking pictures for my marketing efforts. And it just depends on what channel it's going to fit best on. Do you have a thought on or an approach on video in that channel versus pictures? And, you know, how, how have you seen engagement one versus the other? Or what are your thoughts on that? So um, I did read a statistic that folks like audio on Insta stories, which is honestly it kind of surprised me because a lot of times when I watch Insta stories, I'll tap through a lot and look at pictures and listen a little bit and that sort of thing. But um, I always try to do a mix. I don't want too many just pictures or so many videos that it people don't end up watching the ones that I really want to target in terms of um, like I started to do, for example, um, these 
elapsed time, these video elapsed things of uh, me folding sweaters at yeah. a client during a closet audit. So I'll just set up my camera because we always have about half an hour for cleanup and organizing. So I just set up my camera and I have like a huge pile of sweaters and I just go ahead and start it. So there always has to be a little bit of entertainment value. I feel like if you're going to do video, something that's got um, like a little bit of a fun element to it that you can play around with. Otherwise, a picture I think will do. Yeah, and you and I were talking because I was like, I don't do a lot of the look at the camera and talk thing. And some people, that's the only way they use that channel, right? And that's because for me as a consumer, I just click, 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 and I like the pictures. I don't really stop and li listen to people. Um, but then, you know, we were laughing, Rosanna, because um, you do that sometimes. And now I feel like I put that thought in your mind and you were texting me like, oh, I just did it again. Oh, so what are your thoughts? What do you see engagement wise when you do talk to the camera? Thoughts on that? Research on that? Anything? Um, I usually talk to the camera for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm either giving a style tip, you know, I've done little bits where I'm talking about tailoring and estimates about tailoring or, you know, best places to, so I'll talk to the camera for those types of bits. Um, or if I'm like demonstrating something, I also talk to the camera if, um, I'm just inspired to do something a little silly, you know, where, I was sitting in my car in between clients the other day and I was in Alexandria and I gone to my two favorite spots to eat and I had cheese, like that pimento cheese I bought. And I just felt like it was a fun moment to show um, a different side of me, you know, other than the businesswoman or the personal styling. But I also am obsessed with pimento cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is the whole thing of, the, you know, the idea of your personal brand and how important when you're a business owner that you have some humanity or personality behind who you are so that people know who you are and they want to kind of work with you. Uh, and then also, I think it's this idea of pegging yourself as an expert, right? And sometimes you can't do that through imagery, but giving these little style tips in this medium is an effective way for you to show your expertise. Absolutely. And people need to hear your voice. They really do to connect with you. I, when I read that statistic, it really did click with me. I'm like, of course, because if it's just images or silence, there is going to be something missing there. I do feel like you do have to have your, your customer and your potential client needs to hear you. And yeah, absolutely. Okay, we have another question. Let's see, Renee. I have a fashion lifestyle blog, so biggest issue for me is doing them in public and not being awkward, obvious. Oh, I totally get this and drawing too much attention. Um, like when I see clothes and I'm excited, I want to share. Even if you save to use it later, how do you handle that? And I think that, I mean, that is so, I do it. I'm that awkward person. My husband hates it. Um, but what do you say to that, Rosanna? <laughs> No, it is. It, it. I can't say it's going to get any. It's awkward. It is. And it's uncomfortable, especially when you first start doing it. But my team laughs at me because I literally have no shame, you know, and I feel like that is if you're going to have it work. And that's the thing about Insta stories is you really do have to be consistent with it and not just kind of post interests and drabs. But I feel like you really do need to kind of to test it and see if it's working. You need to be consistent with it. And so I really, I, it's part of my day now, honestly, especially if I'm with clients or I'm out shopping or doing things, it's, it's always in my mind now. I have to get a few shots. You know, I have to get a few snippets. Um, this is part of my marketing strategy. So, yeah, and I really do, I like try to tell clients that are starting, like, it really does become your way of thinking, right? Like any new activity I'm going to do, I kind of have already thought about how I can capture it in Insta stories, um, which may sound pathetic or very strategic. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, your mind just starts to operate that way, right? <laughs> But it does, I mean, I wouldn't, my uh, my mother-in-law was like, wow, does this really work? You know, and like she's seen me take pictures and stuff. And it really does. I mean, I've made some really great connections on Insta Story. Sometimes I'll be out eating with friends. And I've told you this story before. I love this story. But I, you know, I get approached probably once a week by somebody who follows me on Insta Stories just like, coming up to me and saying, you know, I just wanted to say hello. I love following you. And 
really that what that tells me is that I'm doing something right and that I'm establishing some sort of connection with potential clients, potential customers, where they feel comfortable enough to come say hello. You know, they yeah. feel like they know me, you know, they feel like connected. And that's really the goal, um, especially when you're selling a service like personal styling, which is so personal. Um, you want people to feel comfortable with you coming into their home and they have to feel like, yes, I I would feel comfortable with that lady coming into my home and going through my closet. <laughs> Can you give another example, Rosanna? So that was one example I love where it's like, I mean, she's getting approached like once a week. This is crazy by people who are like watching her Insta stories, right? And getting to know her. And can you also give us an example or two of how it's correlated to direct sales? Because I think this is often the apprehension of business owners is I don't have time for this and it's a nice frou-frou to have and maybe it helps like enhance your brand, but how is it really going to drive sales for me? So sh give us an example how it has for you and also if you can, Think about even if it's not a stylist or something as visual, how it still could relate to somebody in another industry. Absolutely. So first, let me just give you the picture of how my business has changed in terms of marketing and where this Insta Stories fits in. When I first started as a personal stylist in 2009, um, my, I relied almost 100% on past client referral and like traditional press coverage, you know, really those avenues were what I 100% depended on to get new clients. Today, more than half of our clients come from online sources, whether it's Google wow. searches, um, so get your, you know, SEO in gear, but um, social media like Instagram, um, we send surveys every week to our clients that we worked with that week. And one of the questions on there is, how did you hear about us? You know, it's one of, it's it's the question we asked at the beginning and we ask again at the end because that's super important for us to sure. know what's working and what's not. So what that tells me, I mean, you'll when I look at those reports, um, I do I see and I don't just see online as the response. I see Instagram as the response. So um, that is right now half, you know, half of how we get our clients is like through those different channels. And a lot of times what happens is, is um, we um, we will have a client find us, maybe search for us on Google and find our web, our website pops up. And then they follow, start following us on social media, on Instagram to kind of vet us, you know, see if we're yeah. the real deal, you know, see what we're about. And so really the Instagram portion, I feel like is, it's almost like the closer, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's what um, lets people know that uh, we really truly are professional working personal stylists. And yeah, that, that you're legit, it legitimizes you because they see you in action and they see your expertise. Exactly. So, so absolutely. I mean, I have seen it translate into business and it's there in black and white for me in those reports that I get every week. And um, the other thing I wanted to point out is I um, I had done the stylist training for the past couple of years with another member of the tribe, Lonnie yeah. Inlander. And um, the last um, session that we put on, we had um, eight trainees and um, five of those trainees came from DC Style Factory social media page or from our Instagram page, which is huge if you think about it. You know, it's Crazy. almost, I mean, more than half. Yes, which kind of blew my mind a little bit. You know, these people had just one woman flew from San Francisco. You know, I mean, people found us through our social media. And so what that tells me, and they were following Insta stories, they were, and I will tell you my Insta stories gets much more engagement than my regular post. But we can dive into that in a second too. But I do, I focus a, a lot more on Insta stories now than I do on my posts. I, like I still schedule my posts and everything, but but I really do get a lot of DMs and I get a lot of views and engagement on Insta stories. So why do you think that, well, how do you know that? Because let's talk a little bit about like the business versus the personal. Um, we talked about how, um, I'm still set up under personal, but Rosanna was sharing to me with me all the analytics and insight you can get 
because you have a business profile, right? On Insta Stories. Anjali. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I'm just good at dishing out the advice. I don't really take it. <laughs> Um, so tell us about the analytics and like how you are validating that your stories are effective. Sure. So obviously, you know, there are analytics you can, when you're on a business page, you can actually dive and I don't have my phone in front of me because I'm talking to you guys. I should have it, but you can dive into your Instagram analytics. If you have a business profile for Insta stories, an easy, quick view is, um, just by tapping on the story so that you see all of your stories up top and you actually can see how many viewers and then you actually can tap on that and see exactly who's viewed your stories. So what I but look you can at do that for personal. Yeah, exactly. You can. So okay. that's what I look like. And then you can dive deeper and look at ages, you know, ages of people that are looking at your social media and really drill down and see who's viewing it. But when I look at how many viewers are looking at it, I'm looking for an uptick, obviously, you know, and that's how I know that what I'm doing is appealing, you know, to someone. The other thing that I look at is DMs. How many DMs am I getting for any particular story? And Direct message for those of you that might not know. Um, okay, and do you see a lot of people DMing you? I do. I get, um, so I told you I post um, 15 to 20 of those 30 second bits each day. And I field um, between 50 and 60 DMs a oh day. My God. And there are different types of DMs. Like there, some of them are just like affirmations, you know, like, awesome, I love that or whatever. Yeah. And some of them are actually questions, like style questions you know, about what I've posted about. And then some are um, business queries, you know, from Amazing. clients, um, for people who want to partner. So it's kind of that variety of messages. But and I you check all of them, right? And you respond to all of them. And I respond to all of them. And I respond to them twice a day. Okay. And re remember, Tribe, we talked about this, or I talked about it in a different, I don't know, live or something, um, how DM on Instagram has become a really effective method for getting in touch with either prospects, customers, influencers. Um, you know, I mentioned Melissa D. Arabian from the Food Network. I got her um, to be a meetup guest because I DM'd her on Instagram. Um, and Jasmine Starr, I shared like a couple, a month ago, a uh, piece that she did. She's a huge Instagrammer and how she talks about the effectiveness of DM on Instagram. And I think the flip side is as a business and or as an influencer, you want to be responsive um, to the DMs as well, because that can be a good way to, for people to get a hold of you. Um, Absolutely. I want people to feel that's sort of how I want Insta stories to feel. Um, and that's how it's different from actual the actual posts on Instagram is I do want Insta stories to feel more intimate, you know, like yeah. a conversation that somebody could have with me and um, really have that direct connection with that potential client, customer or business partner. So yeah. so that I've, I've found it to be so far. I mean, we are talking about um, something that's been around for um, a year and a half. So. Yeah. Learning and growing with it too, but uh, I definitely would attest to the fact that it's made a difference. It's made a market difference. And do you feel? Because I feel like the people who are viewing my stories are very different than the people who are viewing my posts. Or those people viewing my stories aren't necessarily liking my posts, but I know that, that you know. So do you find that you have different audiences as well? I do. I mean, there are some people that view every single one of my stories every day that never have liked a post of mine. And, you know, everybody, you know, about the algorithms on um, on Instagram and everything. But um, it's, you know, if somebody is watching your stories regularly, you're actually going to pop up first in that little stories feed. Yeah. So go right to you first when they're kind of they have downtime and they want to watch some stories yes. so that I think um has been really helpful you know I'm not really oh sorry oh I was saying that you know with that algorithm that's really kind of throwing everybody a curveball I feel like yes which is why stories is great if you can get 
one of those top circles. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you think people are finding you on stories? How, um, how often are you using hashtags um, and or location or how do you, what's the magic in people finding you in the stories platform? So I, that comes to one of my other, the other points that I wanted to make is tag, 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 you know, and tag, I mean, hashtags are great. People do find me through hashtags, like personal stylist or some general hashtags like that. And I'll get like a bump up in views from people who are searching under that. Um, but I also tag um, brands, partners, um, really location. exactly location, all that stuff. And uh, really how I view Insta stories is I'm creating a community, this sort of like DC style factory community where I reach out and then someone reaches back, you know, and I tag everyone I can in my content that includes, you know, the retailers I work with, local retailers, um, brands, you know, that I really shop regularly for my clients. And um, you just never know where business can come from. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll even screenshot your stuff and repost it. And so you can, people can find you that maybe had never heard of you. So that is, that's one benefit to it. The other, um, the other way that tagging has helped me is when I tag my favorite boutiques, um, when I'm pulling for clients or favorite brands, this has led to collaborations, you know, with those retailers because they've reposted my story or something of that nature. So, so there is definitely that tagging and really building what I look at as building those connections and building cross promote. Yeah. Is so helpful to small businesses. You know, because you're not dealing with these monstrous marketing budgets, you have to get really creative about how you get your name out there. Okay. Um, so we're probably going to wrap up in the next five minutes. I have like two or three other questions for Rosanna, but if you guys have questions, keep bringing them in the comments. Um, let me go back, Rosanna, and make sure. Okay. Colleen says, um, I get a lot of <clears throat> followers from other countries. How do you focus promote more locally on Instagram and Insta stories? I think um, <clears throat> that, uh, the geotagging is helpful, you know, and also when you're tagging locally, you know, businesses that are local, something that really focuses you on a certain area. I always am very big on tagging those local businesses and um, and really making sure that people understand that we're a DC styling company. Yeah. So I did read something where it was like, <clears throat> talked about the effectiveness of always tagging your location uh, in your story specifically. And I, if you go in and look, you can see the people who found you from a Bethesda story versus found you. Um, so Colleen, in your case, like, always tagging the, you know, if you're at a store, tagging the store that you're at, or if not, you can still be putting, you can still be tagging Bethesda in everything that you do and maybe hashtagging Bethesda from time to time too. Um, so just being very specific to, to your locale and, and the place that you're at specifically. Um, so what do you think, Rosanna, for those that maybe aren't and I don't, I'm throwing you a curveball, so you can feel free to not, <laughs> I didn't put this one in the questions. Um, but for those that maybe have less of a visual business um, or, you know, because one could argue fashion and style are one of the easier on Instagram specifically. But, um, you know, for those that maybe have either more of a product than a service or maybe not as visual, some thoughts or ideas on how people can still leverage this channel. Um, so I always think it, I love it personally, and it's part of my strategy when I post on Insta stories. Um, but people want to see behind the scenes. I think no matter what sort of business you're in, if you can create behind the scenes, um, compelling behind the scenes, um, for your Insta stories, you'll engage people. And obviously that, you know, sometimes I was just talking with my husband and he's in finance. And he's like, do you think I could use Instagram or Insta stories? You know, and, you know, we really did start to brainstorm. What does that look like when you're in finance? How, because it's not about cute dresses or cute shoes or whatever it is. Well, how do you do that? And um, how do you create something interesting uh, in, in behind the scenes? And really, I think what it is, is people are always interested in two things behind the scenes and hu the human connection. 
you know, that they're dealing with people and not like a logo or like a big nameless, faceless company. You know, people really do crave that connection. And I think that's more and more. And that's really what I try to create every day with Insta Stories. And no matter what your business is, I think you can create that human connection. I also think like the expert element and the tips, you know, so if you have a business that's less visual, figuring out how to share those little snippets of either tips or ways you've interacted with clients or, you know, success stories, um, whether that's in text or figuring out a way, you know, some people, their Instagram, I don't even know how to do, I need to learn how to do this, but the, their Insta stories is almost all like the text where it's a background and just text. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people make ads that way, like kind of mini commercials that way. Um, but that can be a way that even to get started or you talking to the camera. Um. I will say this is my favorite Insta stories. Um, the people that I love to watch the most on Insta stories um, aren't the most curated. You know, they're not the most glossy or the most polished. Mm -hmm. And they're giving me something that feels like I'm getting to know them a little or what they do. You know, and it feels behind the scenes. It feels a little more, I hate to use the word authentic, but it feels like a connection. You know, like I'm on a little sneak peek. Those are the people that I follow most regularly. It's it's not so much the ones that feel super glossy because that really is what Instagram is for in my, you know, yes. is that really curated, glossy look. But the Insta stories, that's sort of how I differentiate it is, um, that's a little more behind the scenes. It's the nuts and bolts of how we work and what we're doing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you guys should follow Rosanna because she's got, she's a busy woman. <laughs> so you can, and um, that's one of the tips I give is, you know, follow people. If you're, if you're hesitant to get started or you're not sure how to get started, find people who are in your industry um, or people who you just kind of look up to and you, you know, have brands that maybe you're trying to emulate, even if it's a completely different industry, um, even your friends to get started. I think like the more you're watching other people doing the platform and using it, the more you get an idea of how you can leverage it for yourself. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to take a picture of you for Insta Stories. I know. Well, earlier I was doing it and I forgot to tell everybody I was trying to Insta, you know, story. <laughs> you do an Insta story for this Insta Stories. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> you have to. Right. Um, okay. Do we have any other questions? Okay. One more question from Renee. I love it. There are never enough. There are never too many questions. Never so too many questions. Fire them away. Um, have you found what time of day is better to do a business post versus a personal post? I'm glad you asked that question because people do do a lot of timing around Insta stories. I have to kind of go organically with my day, you know, so I really do want it to feel like this story. Um, but yeah, I, I post the business stuff um, in the morning to the late to early afternoon and the family stuff honestly is reserved for I post it more in the evening you know so but I get more engagement during the day anyways so it yeah. makes to to uh do it during the day so I would say I my first post usually goes at about um anywhere between seven and nine depending on what my day is you know i'll do one little post and then i'll save a bunch and do one midday and then i'll do some more at the end of the day okay talk really quick um and then i'll let you go uh on what you you talked a little bit about how instagram is more curated insta stories is more of the behind the scenes but what are you reserving for the instagram channel that maybe is not happening on the insta stories yeah. channel so a lot of times what I do on the Instagram channel is I post more detailed um, style tips. You know, I there's more in the caption. It's pictures of our clients, you know, in looks that we've created. I do collages of client outfits. So those are things or us in action, you know. So but they're always um, the pictures are always a little bit better. You know, and there it just it does. It looks a little bit more polished. Um, but yeah, there's definitely more verbiage in yes. the Instagram than obviously there is in the Insta story. And filtering and editing and yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just a little more curated. Okay. And I thought we didn't talk about this, but like people love the before and afters on Insta stories and um, the polls and there's all sorts of things that you can do to kind of engage your audience a little more. Yes. Um, I really feel that, I mean, there's so many things you can do. There's boomerangs. There's like, you know, there's so many cute elements that you can put on Insta stories that honestly can kind of feel a little bit overwhelming. I really feel like you need to just have good content. You know, uh, now Instagram just rolled out a bunch of new fonts for the captions, which are fun to play with. But honestly, I feel like if your content is interesting and um, your viewer is interested, then that's going to really make the difference versus if you're doing like a GIF, you know, or a sticker or something like that. Um, yes. I really feel like to focus on really what your content is going to be about. Yes. Okay. So you can find Rosanna um, at DC Style Factory uh, and you can find me at Ange Pharma and post in the comments below, even if you're watching the replay uh, and share with the tribe how you use Insta stories or share people that you think have really great Insta stories. Um, because I feel like one of the best ways that we kind of can learn and grow is from each other. Right. So, um, you know, post in the tribe and let us know. And maybe this week, I will do another post where everyone can post their handles, you know, like a separate one so that everyone can have ideas of, of each other to follow. Um, but thank you so much, Rosanna. This was awesome. And I mean, I should have booked an hour for us because there's so much we could talk about. We'll do it again soon. Um, I was thinking of maybe having you at a meetup sometime. So, um, but thank you all for tuning in. Comment, even if you're watching the replay, we will get back to you. Join me next week at 2.30, same place. Um, for uh, time management tips. And if you like what you've seen today, then I hope that you will tell a friend about the tribe because um, you know I'm, I would love to keep to continue to grow this community. Um, thank you, Rosanna. And Bye. thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next week. Bye-bye, everyone.